Okay, so welcome all to the second community call on Immunify. Today we'll be joined by Damian and Pavel. Uh, they are IT consultants from Securing and the authors of SCSVEs, <laughs> or easy to pronounce, the Smart Contract Security Verification Standard. Welcome both. Hi there. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, hi, hello. So, uh, thank you for joining us to this call. Uh, Damien, can you tell us more about yourself? All right, sure. So, uh, I'm a, a security well, I've been I've been a programmer for uh, over 10 years and then I switched to security. Uh, and first it was uh, web2 security and for since like tw uh, 2019 if it's web3 so uh, i've started to focus on uh, smart contracts and now we are working on smart contracts only so we we are the part of the company that uh, does the rev security reviews and uh, uh, audits for uh, blockchain technology in general Oh, thank you. For example, I I checked uh, uh, your Medium and I saw uh, your article explaining the damn vulnerable DeFi challenge. So I found yeah. that quite interesting. I will share it with the with the rest of the users because uh, some of the, <laughs> some of that I I was thinking of using it for. For the spot debug. Sorry, for what? For the spot debug challenge on the ah spot debug. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very yeah, much. I'm not. I'm not the creator. I'm not the creator of this project. Them vulnerable DeFi is by Tincho, but I have created. I have for. Uh, I have forked his uh repo and added some write-ups for the challenges there and this uh, this article summarizes that so i'm not the creator of them vulnerable defi i'm rather creator of write-ups for them vulnerable defi yeah yeah i know i uh, it was uh, your explanations the the ones who helped me to understand everything on the on that challenge so cool yeah and also, Pavel, can you tell us more about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so hi, all. I'm, I'm Pavel. I'm in IT security for almost five years now. And uh, I would say since for, for about last two years, uh, Damian infected me with this whole web free idea and smart contract security. Uh, he's he's my mentor in in that area in this subject, and yeah, and on the daily basis I work for uh, for securing. Uh, I started with uh, typical appsec and, and network security, etc. Uh, but then I I moved to to the web free uh, because because of Damian. And now I, I really enjoying being the part of this uh, awesome community. Yeah, also Adrian shared one of your articles that, uh, for example, I had some troubles to understand how for the flash launch attacks and the reentrancy attacks worked. And uh, thanks to your to your medium article, I understood the the reentrancy attacks <laughs> so <laughs> yeah uh, yeah that, that that was the goal and i'm really glad to to hear that that it helped uh, at least one person i'm 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 convinced that there there may be more people that were interested in in that uh, right now i feel there are plenty of articles about reentrancy or uh, like we we prefer to say uh, unsafe external calls, uh, which, which which are very well explaining how this uh, vulnerability actually works. 
uh, if someone want to like uh, play with this vulnerability, uh, Eternaut is for sure a, a good place where you can try yourself to to exploit this vulnerability. And also in this uh, article, there is uh, I wrote some some code with simple reentrancy back. Uh, so if someone want to want to try, you can just copy and paste this one on on Remix and and try to exploit this. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, Adrian just shared your your GitHub about SDSVS. <laughs> I'm trying to pronounce it, but yeah. Uh, can you provide us? I read it a little bit about uh, what's the idea and the goal, but can you provide us some introduction? Yeah, sure. So basically, it's uh, SCSVS, and we've already know that the name is not the abbreviation is not very, very easy to to remember or say, but it's the abbreviation from Smart Contract Security Verification Standard, and the, the main idea was to create a checklist for, for development teams, so used internally, or for auditors and for hackers to um, go through this list and check what's the health of the project so the idea is was not only to find the bad things but also to uh, mark the the security requirements because that's what on that list mark them as past so that you can see that your project is not bad i mean if your uh, score after that is like 95 percent of all the security requirements are passed it means that you are on a very good way, uh, very good way, right? So it's almost almost 100% sh secure according to SCSVS. So basically, it's a checklist with security requirements that allows you to score to to grade your protocol. And on the other hand, this is the project that um, I, I've started and finished together with Pavel. Uh, because we wanted to learn a lot and I have problem with doing notes when learning so uh, I thought that I can do it somehow in, in some standards so we used the ASVS that's where the name is from it's called application security verification standard it's project by OWASP maybe some of you know it and we took that format from them and used the same format for smart contracts and uh, this allowed us to like note the most important things from the reports we've read from the articles we've read and it ended up with a quite nice piece of information i guess yeah i would uh, add to that that uh, what like what differs as csvs from from other standards uh, first of all, when when we started building this, uh, writing down this uh, this standard, and uh, there weren't such uh, standards in in the space, and so that was the first very very basic reasons. And uh, the other thing is that various companies, various security companies, have uh, different methodologies of of testing. So. Uh, when you don't know uh, the the company, uh, you have a few companies that are really well known, right? Like Trial of Beats, Open Zeppelin, etc. But those are uh, booked for a few months. But uh, new companies are joining the space, and project someday have to decide to which comp with which company to cooperate. And because they might have different methodologies and different timeframes and different scopes, etc., uh, you will not have a clear view how secure is a particular project. And if you use SCSVS, you have uh, like the same checks for all of uh, the, the projects. So if you will compare like two projects with different scopes and different companies, etc., you will just see that this project have, for example, uh, 50 uh, checks passed, 
50 out of scope, etc. So you have your basic knowledge about uh, like how many check they covered during the tests. Uh, did they cover the whole spectrum, all of the contracts, or or not all of them? Uh, and you can easily compare uh, what is uh, what is going on and make sure that you um, learned lessons from the from the past mistakes. And the the other thing that distinguish SCS SCSVS is that uh, we are trying to cover the the whole spectrum of of security so not just uh, not just bugs that that we've seen uh, terrible in, in 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 some in some hacks but uh, we are trying to start very early from uh, from the design phase where we can try to do some threat modeling and are ready on considering how architecture of our project should look like, we can uh, try to avoid uh, certain certain bugs. Yeah, for example, in the article, Adrian just uh, sent, you talk about the, the version two of the STSVS. Uh, for example, one of the things I saw was to provide, well, different uh, for documentation, for upgradability, and yeah, it's it's very interesting all the work. One of the things, um, for example, if a project uh, use this um, standard to to keep up with the security of the contracts, uh, maybe someone like auditing it's hard to to focus in all the aspects for example someone could make a false positive right and uh, in this how for example can provide a this is the idea of this it's for being used by different smart auditors different projects right yeah yeah exactly one, one more uh, so basically one more thing to note here is that we are in the community talking about security audits audit reports and many other audit like uh, names but in fact most of these reports are not audits they, they are some kind of security review reports so somebody takes this uh, uh, this protocol and goes through that review the code I mean manual reviews not the automatic uh, automatic ones and but there, there is no any standard for that there is no any list that is used all the uh, all times which is the same so we cannot call it audit this is simply security review and if we use a CSVS then we can call it audit because we have a uh, in a constant list. Of course, SCSVS changes over time, but from uh, it's not like it it's changed all the time. Uh, at the same time, it's the same. So basically, if you review many different protocols at this time, you will have the same output. I mean, the same security requirements checked, and so on. So this what you can call a real audit. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, the idea now is to categorize uh, those checks much better so that you can for example internally in your team divide those categories uh, to different people that create the different components of your protocols and uh, that's how you cover whole scsvs by different let's say hands right by different people so it's it will be much easier to use also internally yeah perfect thank you also your your company where uh, you started uh, with web2 security more the background of your company and yours it's web2 security but you also are now smart contracts auditors so can you tell us how went to web2 security to web3 
and any particular tips to anyone making or trying to make the jump sure i guess i guess i can start with that because uh, i have created this um, department in our company uh, well basically a few years ago i was interested in the blockchain technology in general the a lot of block different blockchains like the permissioned ones for example hyperledger the public ones uh, like, like ethereum was the the, the biggest and the still i guess is uh, so i wanted to learn a lot about that uh, and i was of course doing some security consulting for web2 but uh, meanwhile i was gathering knowledge about web3 and uh, as I mentioned before, SCSVS was summarizing that. It was not SCSVS that time. It was like a list of security requirements I would like to check for the protocols and also the tricky parts that you should check, like like how to make the um, price oracle manipulations and so on. So that was my way from Web2 to, to Web3. I was really into Web2 before then. I was working Web2 security for over a decade before so uh, and at some point i wanted to start web3 but it, it was not like you know a jump from one uh, one community to the other it was like going through uh, for like almost a year and then uh, we focused on web i think oh i think we lost damian <laughs> yeah Okay, he he doesn't want to but share back. Uh, with us all, all the tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess he's back. He's in he's an audience. Yeah, uh, he can. So what? He that, that, be able that's to... the time when we can make a fun of him because he cannot speak back. <laughs> I'm not sure why I can't invite him to. I think he needs to click uh, move to the speaker. Let me check if I can do that. No. Ah, the beauty of creating a live event on Discord. Yeah. Mm. How the hell you can invite someone? Oh, yeah right now yeah i'm back so sorry because discord showed me some uh, good tip and then uh, they moved me away from the speaker stage <laughs> can you hear me now <laughs> yeah but... yes uh, that must yeah. have been a really great so, tip <laughs> when when did i uh, you know disconnected what did you hear and what what at what time basically we heard uh, everything was that <laughs> Basically, you were right. uh, telling us that uh, you uh, was working for a decade in the web web two. You spent a year to basically make a move to web three, and the SCV. You know, you know the acronym. Yeah, it's English, Adrian. <laughs> uh, English. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, the first version were basically your a checklist of what to check uh, security wise, and that you just uh, jump off. Yeah, yeah, that summarizes that. And then we when then I moved to to the Web three projects only because I find it very interesting, and I was ready to you know go for that. And if there is a, another tip, we uh, read a lot like articles. Uh, reports and uh, for sure do some programming like try to uh, exploit the known uh, hacks right so make a local hard uh, local node the how is it called mainnet fork uh, yeah, locally mainnet. and execute your poc that you write by your own locally never do it on the mainnet of course yeah, of course. It's I also ask. I also ask. Uh, the last, the last words I remember was that I asked Pavel what was his way because I guess it was quite different. Yeah, it was different and it was pretty easy and short. One day, uh, actually, Damian uh, 
told me that hey look there is something interesting and and i just dive into uh, and and now i'm lost in this space yeah so um, basically i w- i was working in in this uh, appsec area and because of damian because he was sharing his knowledge during during our internal meetings i became interested in this also i i for sure invested in in crypto so so i wanted to understand how it actually uh, works uh, and and that was the the main reason and this is the the moment where for sure i'm i'm still learning i, I think everybody in the space are are trying to develop their skills and changes come every day so so you have to keep up and i'm exploring different ways to understand the the community uh, better so right now i'm also participating in in two boot camps in consensus developer boot camps boot camp to see developers perspective what they are learning uh, to to see some awesome awesome tools uh, which which they have which they are uh, using uh, what best practices and they are learning about and also i'm participating in this uh, securum uh, bootcamp uh, which was started i think 2 months ago something something like that and this one is is a place where you can easily uh, start and and go through through something like checklists of 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 knowledge there this bootcamp is quite intensive and and demanding but i think you can you can learn a lot the golden tip from me would be uh, don't afraid to ask because uh, people in this space are so helpful like uh, damian uh, was for me at the very beginning and and still he's uh, helping me to to understand various attacks when we have some internal calls and we are discussing how it happened or 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 something like that or we are ro- looking for vulnerabilities uh, together so sharing knowledge is is a very good way to uh, to do that and expand your own knowledge because if you are explaining something to someone you have to really understand that and and that's helps a lot and uh, and if if you are not afraid of asking i'm sure there are plenty of people here at immunify chat that will help you understand some some concepts uh, but if you want to first uh, start with uh, if you want to first to like get the the basics i would say uh, start with learning solidity and there are plenty of courses that you can take uh, very uh, very basic and free is solidity by example that i'm almost sure and that most of you know or or should know uh, or at udemy you have a course f- I, I don't remember the exact name but uh, the, the there was some some course uh, developer uh, 2021 something like that it was just just 10 bucks or or something like that and it was really good up to date and uh, for sure worth to to go through if you if you need uh, if you need to to learn some some programming and then i would say uh, reading the ethereum's yellow paper that's for sure and and maybe maybe going through the Securium bootcamp materials, which are also available for uh, free. Those those are quite good. Learning through SCS VS and of course awesome uh, developers roadmap from a CIA of- officer who's I think here or or not. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, his uh, his repo is also a very very good point to start. And for sure, following newsletters uh, like block blockchain block threat intelligence and and React news, reading those 
and just talk with community and be, be active. And that for sure will help you develop your, your skills. And to be honest, you don't need like huge experience to, to looking for bugs or, or working in, in projects because and there is a strong demand for, for auditors. And for sure, you will be like not left alone to, to start auditing and be responsible uh, for those uh, those uh, audits or as Diamond mentioned, security reviews. Uh, but I'm sure that there are plenty companies that if you will prove that you are a person who is uh, willing to learn and already uh, did their own research that will help you to, to grow. So, uh, so yeah, don't be afraid to, to ask for, for help. Yeah, one thing I want to emphasize that Pavel mentioned is very, very well uh, best practice is that if you have a friend that is also interested in Web3 security, divide some articles uh, and you read your part and then explain it to your friend because explaining what's in the article or in the hack or whatever in the POC is the best way to learn uh, because you you actually teach yourself when you explain it to somebody else. So this is a very good way of learning. Yeah, as I also wrote on the uh, on the chat, uh, I can recommend writing uh, on blog and just uh, write articles explaining different stuff. You, you'll be surprised uh, how much you can learn by just trying to explain something. Okay, so uh, uh, as we know, or if the rest of the audience don't know, uh, and just joined, uh, Pavel and Damian are also smart contract uh, uh, security auditors. So, uh, any interesting stories uh, from the auditing world that you want to share with the community? Uh, what are the main vulnerabilities that you are seeing in the projects that you are auditing right now? All right. So basically, the, there is many of the well-knowns which are not very interesting because they are like you see them and you just, yeah, you see them for the next time and you're bored of them. But sometimes uh, I found uh, quite interesting vulnerabilities such as those which uh, the arithmetic ones, and I'm not thinking about uh, underflows or overflows, but rather something like um operations on different order of magnitudes so for example if you want to uh, compare let's say DAI and usdc you must remember that they have different number of decimals and if you do not normalize them you will be like mm, compare trillions of uh, usdc with one die th th this is nice group of, of vulnerabilities but also uh, business logic vulnerabilities and integrations like if we are talking about integrations uh, some projects uh, call functions from smart contracts that are outside their project and they never think of potential threats that come from those pro those uh, protocols for example integration with tokens and uh, you just uh, assume that it's typical ERC20 token, but uh, it looks like uh, when you look into those projects that you want to integrate with, they have, for example, a deflationary token, or uh, there are some special functions. Not very, not the, not only the typical ones for ERC20, but some other, uh, uh, some other. F uh, for example, transfer to function, which was quite common. And I've explained uh, a case with that on ETHCC, where you could simply uh, do a transfer call uh, without approving the, the token, uh, sorry, the spender. And it allowed to uh, drain the wallets of uh, sex exchanges, centralized exchanges. 
Yeah, I would I would add to that that uh, what we are trying to achieve in SDSVS version version two is um, is like up- upgrading this standard to to make it more useful and cover such threats. Because right now uh, this is uh, this is a standard with categories. Uh, from designing through those uh, through building and and different vulnerabilities but our like idea for the second version is to create a such thing as chapters so there will be a three chapters one general which will have uh, most of the categories in the in the current SES vs and the second one will be components, which is which will be dedicated uh, for uh, for components that developers of particular project are are building. And the third one will be related to integrations. So uh, such vulnerabilities, as Damian mentioned, for for example, integrations with with token will be uh, very easy to to cover during the test so let's say you are you are a project you are developing your your own project you went through the um, you went through the sds vs version 2 and then you are trying to um, to expand your project and integrate with with uh, some some new component, let's say token or something like that, you will be able to go through a particular ca- a category related to uh, token with special checks uh, just uh, just for such component, and you will be able to to avoid mistakes made in the in the past. So the the whole idea, which will will be to make this standard more com- composable, uh, because developers right now are using various components which are already like um, quite well uh, standardized. Like there there are a few patterns that are used more often than than the other ones when we have for example token contracts bridge contracts and and things like that and so we will try to prepare uh, checks for uh, particular components and when you are building your projects from different smart contracts as uh, as from lego or, or something like that you will be able to have a very specific category for your very specific uh, block. That sounds really uh, interesting. And uh, can you tell us, if you can, of course, um, when can we expect uh, the version 2 to arrive? Uh, what's the uh, current status of uh, the development? And uh, later on, if everybody on this call would like to contribute uh, to the standard, is there uh, a way to do that? Uh, will it be open source or uh, we should just bombard you in DM, with DMs? <laughs> uh, so I, I would say that we will try our best to um, to have a draft repo with uh, with these three chapters and some uh, categories before the end of this year. Uh, I'm not sure, but but we will uh, do our best to to do that. Uh, we already uh, spoken with uh, a few very uh, very known persons from from the block uh, block sec community. We will ask you guys uh, uh, as well to get a feedback about all of the categories and checks because the more people will get involved in this standard and there is a bigger chance that this standard will become really a, a standard. 
this is not a checklist just for us. We want to make it someday maybe even uh, like 100% uh, community driven or something. We will, we will see how it uh, goes. But uh, the, the main goal is that some other companies will start using those some projects will use this standard on their own and to to do that for sure we want to involve more more and more people from the from the space so as soon as we will uh, as we will re release the draft repository uh, you will be able to uh, take a look at the at the checks at categories and if someone uh, we want to help uh, or just simply uh, let's say need a t category for some 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 smart contract uh, pattern or or something like that and there will be a, a place for that to to request for such features or just create your own checks and uh, and we will validate those or or some some other people from the space and and we'll see how how it goes actually yeah, then, we we want we want to make it in the sip form which is a csvs improvement proposal form and of course i'm kidding yeah, but uh, we want to create some kind I'm, of i'm having already a problem with pronouncing scsvs yeah yeah I, that's <laughs> why i didn't say scsvs ip <laughs> but what i mean is that we're gonna create a template uh, for proposals and if somebody wants to create a tech category or a, a security requirement they will just follow it it's like it's like on githubs right the issue template where you which you use to uh, make us very to make to make it for us very easy to uh, you know uh, say whether it's awesome. useful and uh, comment it and if it's uh, approved added to the repo and also one one more uh, one more thing is that we we are talking with some exchanges because it looks like some exchanges i mean of course the centralized ones uh, who list tokens they are interested in such standard because it's like at, at the moment they are asking some companies to review the token and probably most of those companies have some of their uh security checklists not not everybody wants to make it uh, public uh but if we use a csvs for that we would have a standardized way of um reviewing the tokens to be listed on exchanges so if if uh, some exchanges use a csvs as a standard uh, that's how it's called right uh, then uh, one a coverage one compliance audit would be enough for many different exchanges to decide whether they are good with that outcome from this report and list it the token i mean or not awesome okay i have two short questions uh, and then we can move to the community uh, questions so guys uh, listening you can start preparing your questions right now but uh, first, uh, quick question: what Would be the one number one tip that you, you would give to all Solidity developers that would increase security of the project? And I'm not talking about integrating with SCSV. Actually, I I, I cannot hear you very well because it likes. <laughs> okay, and uh, can you hear me now? Some interrupts, but so the 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 question was about the tip, right? The tip for so, uh, Solidity developers for the protocols, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, so, question, yeah. Okay, so, and I cannot say that it's uh, using a CSVS, right? So the second yeah. best tip, the second best tip <laughs> would be to uh, do the internal threat modeling before you start implementing. So basically getting your team uh writing uh, drawing a diagram with all the components that you have and you build and all the components that you integrate with uh adding some data flow so what data goes from your 
a uh, protocol what g data comes to your protocol from other components what the data goes between components in your protocol and then switch your mind to potential hacker to the attacker and uh, try to imagine what could potentially go wrong so what are the threats in here uh, if you are using price oracle uh, uh, imagine that attacker would like to manipulate the price how can he achieve that and are you ready for that are you ready for the uh, for an attacker that would uh, make a huge swap using flash loan to manipulate the price for one for one transaction only so that's that's the best tip it's not like straightforward it's not that easy to to do but i'm sure that if you spare some time to learn that or use some companies like ours to help you with that then you would be uh, it would be easy for you to do it again for another component for another project uh, and it will um, save you a lot of time long term because we've seen projects that asked us for uh, for the security review uh, and the csvs compliance and they uh, it ended up with a report full of crits because uh, yeah you could easily do a lot of harm to this project uh, but if you had a simple quick threat modeling session you would uh, like eliminate most of those criticals and you would also save some time because the the project had to be almost rebuilt from the scratch yeah that's that's really a a good one uh, as Damon started with the very uh, beginning, I, I would uh, give some tip at the almost end. Um, I would say that when you get your report from uh, security auditors, and do not treat those reports as a badge or certificate or, or stuff like that, I would say treat those reports as a source of knowledge like a place from which you can uh, for a research a resource from which you can uh, expand your developers team knowledge so when you have this report uh, take 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 your time to have a short meeting with uh, developers talk about these vulnerabilities uh, think if you have if you might have uh, such vulnerabilities in other places which were out of scope or uh, other places that auditors uh, missed and during the test because there are always a time frame and balance between the costs and uh, quality of of audits so and uh, take your time read the report mm, talk about this report and vulnerabilities with the uh, developers uh, and 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 look for the same vulnerabilities in other places uh, and then uh, you can write if there is a possibility write a uh, test uh, and add those to your project to cover such vulnerabilities it's not always that that easy but sometimes you you can write some tests and when you are expanding your uh, your test test suit and you are expanding your project, you might cover and protect your yourself so auditors can spend more time on on other stuff. Yeah. Okay, so thanks for the answer. Now I think we can move to the community uh, community questions because already uh, there are incoming. Okay, so first question would be, what is your opinion on hunting Solana? as compared to solidity context. Any personal experience would like? I think uh, your mic is having some problems. Ah, yeah, we it. are losing you. Yeah, I will read the, the question. It was, uh, what's your opinion on hunting Solana books as compared to solidity contracts? Any uh, personal experience you would like to share? I would say that I don't have such experience, but I would say hunting bugs is good everywhere. I would say go and, and hunt 
uh, in in a place which makes you curious. And uh, so so yeah, that that would be that would be my yeah. Me, me neither. I, I haven't reviewed uh, any Solana uh, contracts in written in Rust, but I guess this question is rather what what would you like more to hand for for Solana or Ethereum? And the question is, it doesn't matter if you like Rust or know it, go for Solana. If you like Solidity or know it, go for uh, EVM based. Actually, Solana also is EVM. It's EVM compatible, I guess. So there might be uh, Solidity contracts there, uh, I guess. But yeah, natively it's Rust. So it's rather the question about the language, not about uh, you know the difference in hunting. I guess there are there are bugs here and there, and uh, Solana and Rust is probably less common. So if you know Rust, it's much easier to find something there, I guess. Yeah, Rust is also, it's less like, I felt I just uh, read a little bit about how Rust, how Rust programming language works and felt more like C or uh, almost ensembly than, than Python or Solidity that are more easy to understand, in my opinion. But yeah, the the, the main difference the main difference is that uh, Rust is uh, parallel, while Solidity is not. So that's that's how they achieve very high throughput. Mm -hmm. So the next question, uh, yeah, when you audit a new big contract, what are the typically some steps you take in order to get a good overview of that contract and also similar to that uh, uh, how can one get better knowledge about bid contracts like for example the variables and that stuff yeah this is a very good question because it divides the security reviews into two groups the automatic ones, where you run some automatic tools that looks for typical technical uh, vulnerabilities or just bugs, which are not really vulnerabilities, but it's good to fix them. And the other kind of security reviews, which are uh, manual and which, in my opinion, should focus on the business logic. So. Uh, what we usually do when we have a new project from the field that we've never been working uh, with, for example, like mortgage uh, market, and the, the first thing is to understand what's the goal of the protocol. So we, we read the white paper, we write down some uh, specifics and also write down some stuff that is interesting and could be manipulated. So we want to uh, later, make sure that it cannot be bypassed. This this logic that is described in white paper. And then we want to understand what's the the business the main business process in the protocol. So we want to go through that. If the protocol is very new, and I'm not I'm not thinking about the the solidity code. I'm thinking about the market that it's created for. Then we usually have a call with. Uh, with our client uh, that on which uh, they describe the the idea the goal the the main business process and during that time we do this threat modeling like some kind of instant threat modeling where we are like hearing what they are saying they are describing their protocol their components and we are like uh, at the same time trying to find a way to abuse what they are saying because usually the, the, when they describe their protocol, they say that, okay, now the the user, uh, let's say, burns uh, some part of his shares in this pool, let's say, and the at this at the same time we are thinking, okay, what happens if they try to uh, burn more shares than they have, or can they influence the price of the share when they burn it? So. 
we are thinking about the the scenarios, the abuser stories that we want to later uh, confirm. And if we confirm them, it means that there is a vulnerability. Yeah, I would I would add to that that uh, we are we are the lucky ones that we basically always have access to uh, to the developers we we have access to their slack or some some other communication channel so if we don't understand something and the idea behind it or, or something like that we can always ask them but if you are not working as an auditor you can still uh, try to join some uh, projects discord or or slack very often uh, they have they might have some public channels and there you can ask questions or find some developer that is working and and just say hi and say that you are looking for security bugs and you don't understand some particular process or or something and can they explain uh, this one to you i i would say it can be useful, these uh, very simple methods, uh, but yeah, just asking helps a lot. And the, the, the other part of this question, like how you get better knowledge and have to, uh, I, I would add that uh, very often we are using uh, this uh, tool, Surya, uh, Surya Describe, to just see uh, the the functions, the function names, and do not focus on the uh, very detailed logic of the functions, but uh, to to the threat modeling, which uh, Damian said before. Uh, quite often, we are just looking at the function names, so you don't have to see exactly how function works to came up with a few ideas for, for threats, right? You just see there is deposit, withdraw, whatever, and a few ideas comes to your mind. mind if Can I de deposit less or can I withdraw more, et cetera, et cetera? And then you are just writing down those scenarios and try to validate if those are uh, true or, or not. Yeah, I uh, I think the what you said about you said it several times about asking to to understand and asking for help in this space is very useful and also a lot of people are willing to to collaborate with you to help you to understand and I think it's very cool in this area to to have that kind of people. Also, other questions? Uh, yeah, I see there was a question about any certification or coursework available for security auditing uh, besides the secure bootcamp. I would say that the, the thing that Damon mentioned at the, at the very beginning, so forking uh, forking the minet and trying in a local environment, uh, like going through the current exploits with some help of, of other people, if it's necessary, that would be the, the best thing to do because you are learning like not theoretical stuff, but you are learning about the bugs who are actually, which are actually uh, a current threat, uh, and yeah, that that would be and the, the second source. Also, this Eternaut and and them vulnerable uh, DeFi, those are very very good CTFs. Also, the question from Adrian about. Uh, where can you learn more about threat modeling? You, men you mention it quite often, and if you can point any resource. Mm, 
there is there is a lot of different approaches to threat modeling some of the some of them are quite hard to implement because they are very um you know it's a lot of uh, stuff needs to be done to finish this threat modeling according to that standards like stride or or, or others but uh, our idea uh, together with uh, with Cuba from our company was to uh, create something which was called instant threat modeling and actually you can find that on YouTube uh, on our company's uh, channel or you can just simply Google instant threat modeling on YouTube uh, I mean search on YouTube of course uh, and but the idea is like I mentioned before, you just you do not need any special methodology to do that. You firstly write down the the components that you own, you build, and those that you integrate with, all the connections, and then you try to switch your mindset to the hacker ones, uh, to the hackers one, uh, which is I guess the the hardest part here because you know your project, you know what are the connections and switching to the hacker's mind is uh, much harder but fortunately in the Web3 community and the uh, focus on the security is much bigger than in, in, Web3, in Web2 so there is much more people that are interested in the security uh, and know the security, know the best practices so they uh, when they see the diagram, they see some of the uh, potential threads there. But yeah, to sum up, just go through the instant threat modeling uh, videos and you will see how you can do it very easily and very fast for small uh, components of your protocol or on the high level of your protocol which is a good start, I guess, and gives you some experience. Okay, thank you so much. I think it's one hour of meeting. If someone had any more questions or someone want to say anything else, or we can wrap uh, it up. I think CKK Sack had a question about uh, taking taking notes. Uh, personally, I use uh, Visual Studio Code bookmarks, and there is an extension for those uh, bookmarks, and you can simply mark in the code some some parts and and take some notes. But the the other thing that we are also using. Uh, or mind maps and those are I would say very very useful uh, so uh, as mind maps we are using uh, free plane so the the sum of first things that that we are doing uh, or or at least I'm doing is going through the through the uh, repo with the contracts. I'm using Surya Describe to have a brief descriptions uh, of particular contracts, and then I'm pasting those to the to the mind map and to have it in a, in a one place. And then uh, I might go through either scenarios or. Uh, contracts and their function and it's very easy for me uh, using those mind maps because I have various flags and icons to uh, mark that is something that something is done or or not or that I'm uh, I'm working in this particular area and someone else's is working in some different area and and stuff like that or some questions related to a particular space in the in a code or or something like that so yeah bookmarks and and uh, and mind maps yeah I guess, exactly. I guess there is also a solidity developer i guess it's called uh, it's another Sorry, Solidity Visual Developer. It's another plugin for uh, VS Code uh, by 
probably by Tintin, but I'm not sure from consensus. Uh, and this also helps to see the the scope when whenever you open a contract, you like see the summarize of that. And another one which is quite interesting is the solidity metrics uh, by the same author, I guess. So there there are some nice tools there that you can use and that helps you like see the scope of the protocol, uh, understand uh, what are the connections between the contracts. So it, they, mar they make the security review uh, much easier. Okay, perfect. I just send the metrics. So thank you very much. I'm not sure if someone have any other question. Oh yeah, <laughs> about the what's your favorite snack during the work? You, you mean snack? Yeah, yeah. It's another question. Uh, for, so. <laughs> for me, yeah, yeah. All right. That's that's the question. Okay, so for me, it's always chocolate, any sure. kind, any any kind of chocolate. And I love ice creams. And actually, there was a, a flavor uh, this month in one of the companies in in Poland, Willish. Uh, there was a flavor of Bitcoin, and uh, that one was was very very interesting. Oh. I gu I guess it's called Willish, but uh, Willish. it's like <laughs> okay. it's re it's written to be sound uh, to to sound like English, but it's Willish. So uh, you eat ice cream with minus four degrees. Yeah, uh, he does. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, good. I, I eat ice creams all the time. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for all the information and anything else? Yeah, thank you for for having us. Soon we will uh, we will send some information about uh, this uh, SCS Powers upgrade. So I encourage all to. Uh, follow us on on Twitter, and if someone uh, would want to contribute to this project, get involved, etc., just uh, hit us through DMs or or something like that, and uh, for sure we will uh, get you involved. Yeah, I also wanted to do thank you for having us, and yeah, we are there, Twitter, mail here on Discord, so if you have any other questions or you came up with other questions later, just hit us up. Perfect. Thank you so much. So I will be closing this. I send your Twitter to the channel. So yeah, perfect. Thank you and bye. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. bye, -bye.